Emoji. Popcorn emoji. Oh, people are already on there. So, um, whoever is on there, can you just let me know that the sound is okay? You can hear everything okay? There's another emoji. There. I don't know what that emoji means. If it's a, <laughs> if it's a good one or a bad one. What's he call a cat that lacks lemons? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, so can you guys maybe David? Can you just let me know that you can hear everything okay? Thank you. Um, so if anyone's watching there, can you just um, give me the, some indication just through the comment section that you can hear us okay? The other thing, that's working there, that's working there, it should be working. So hey guys, um, it's just Dr. James here, just getting set up to do this uh, core based leveling autonomy. Just want to make sure if you're watching, if you could just put a comment um, in the comment section that you can hear us okay. Can you just, so Jess, you've got that live there, you can hear that okay, Tess, check, check. Okay, perfect. So we'll push ahead. So. Um, we are here, my name is Dr. James Simcock, we're at South Falls in Mornington, um, and we're gonna do a um, CBLO today, which is a little bit different, different flavor from the TPLOs that we would typically do um, for managing crucial disease. This is a golden retriever that's um, 11 months old, has bilateral problems. Janine, can I get that light turned on, please? And we're doing a CBLO because um, this dog has got a tibial apophysis that's still um, not fused onto the tibia. So we're going to do a CBLO because it's going to uh, minimise the risk of having problems. I'm just going to try and zoom in a little bit. Uh, yeah. Just change the angle a bit. So that looks pretty good. Okay. So just seeing out if uh, my head gets in the way, um, just so there's not any problems with what's going on. Oh, Charles, long time watcher. <laughs> Who is that guy? <laughs> so Charles, we're doing a CBLO today, a bit different, mixing it up. Shouldn't you be working, Charles? <laughs> Thank you. So we're just getting a few instruments and everything set up and then we'll get started. Say that again, Ewan. Oh, yeah. So we'll get started. Ewan's going to get a few things set up. I'm going to start our approach here. So um, similar approach to when we do a TPLO, it's just a, a medial approach onto the proximal tibia. Um, so we've already done an arthroscope on this dog's knee. I haven't actually um, recorded or filmed the arthroscope. I don't have the technology in Mornington at the moment to be able to show you the scope as well as the um, as the surgery. So we have assessed the knee inside the joint. The cruciate ligament was an early partial tear, so we left that intact. The medial meniscus was intact. And so um, everything was looking in pretty good shape there. So not all surprising because it is a pretty young dog. Interestingly, this dog actually presented for an assessment of bilateral hip dysplasia. And when it came in, we actually diagnosed him not only with hip dysplasia, but also with bilateral cruciate disease. So. He had the first leg operated um, a couple of weeks ago, and now we're going to operate on the second side. So generally when I'm doing TPLOs or these CBLO procedures, I don't like to typically do them um, bilateral single session at the same time. Um, I'd prefer to stage them by generally a couple of weeks. Oh, Charles is giving sass. What's he saying? <laughs> Okay, cheers, Charles. Have a good day. So Charles is actually working up at our um, kind of sister hospital, if you like, up in Rabin. And I'm working down at our beachside hospital down in Mornington.
Don't tell our business manager, but it was a little bit cheeky and got to work a bit late today because I went scuba diving this morning um, to try and catch a crayfish, but I was unsuccessful. I did manage to see a very large crayfish, but I couldn't tempt him out of his hole. So he lives to swim around for another day. Uh, can I get some gelpies, please? Thank you. Right in front of my face, as usual. So a lot of the approach and everything like the C, that for the sea below is, is pretty similar as for a TPLO. I do um, just kind of take the peasant a little bit further off. I'm trying to do this in a way that I can keep the visualization nice for you guys. But it does make it a little bit more awkward when I try and do that. Okay, so you can see patella tendon here, um, the, uh, the insertion of the um, patella tendon onto the tubuturosity here through the Sharpies fibers, just here. Just going to get a bit more exposure here. Can I get the table flattened out now, please, Jess? That's better. Not working down around my knees anymore. And so now we can see kind of medial tibia. Do you want to hold on to that again? Control this little bleeder here. Um, so you just got the proximal medial aspect of the tibia. We've got medial collateral ligament running down here. I'm just going to take the popliteus muscle off that quarterly a little bit. Can I get two 25 gauge needles, please? And then just do I have my iPad in here? Do I forget to bring that in here? Can you maybe grab my iPad off the um, yeah. off my desk, please? So next thing we'll need you is the calipers. And we're gonna we've done a pretty detailed plan for this guy already. So I'm just gonna work out roughly where my saw blade's gonna sit on this leg. So first measurement we had was from um, I'll just continue that up here. Make our exposure a lot easier. I'm just using this first needle to just mark out where the joint is. Actually, going to come a bit further caudal, just in front of the collateral ligament there. I'm going to mark out about 15 millimeters. So this is roughly where my saw is going to exit the bone um, in the caudal aspect. Um, 5890, please. And then just flip that up. Um, that one there. Yep, middle one. And then just hit OK, and then go. Not Bill and Martin, go to, um, yeah, will be. And go to the bottom image. Perfect. So we're using a planning software called VPOP Pro, um, which I've talked to you guys a bit about before, and I really, really like it. It's a um, product made by a called Rory Patton from the UK, and it's a really great um, piece of software um, if you're doing orthopedics at all, especially if you're doing things like TPLOs, so, thank you. Just marking here now from the tibial tuberosity down um, to a point on the cranial aspect of the tibia where the saw blade is actually going to exit the bone. So I've got two marks, one here quarterly and another one here cranially. And then um, with a bit of luck, the 24 saw blade is going to basically sit between those. And this is going to work pretty nicely. So if I so good, you and and we want um, basically the cranial aspect of the saw blade to be kind of coming out parallel with the cranial aspect of the tibial tuberosity and the, um, the caudal aspect of the saw blade up here to be coming out kind of perpendicular with the bone, which is doing that quite nicely. 
Before we start cutting, I'm just going to triple check that our plate's going to work. So can I get a right uh, CBLO plate, please? So as you guys know, if you have any questions, feel free to sing out. Um, seems pretty quiet on the chat now. Charles is gone. Uh, tree five, correct. Okay, so I think that's going to sit in there pretty well. As long as Ewan's happy, I'm happy. He's far more judgmental than I am about my surgical ability. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to go. So, yeah, I'll get it started, Ari, and then we'll get the flush going. Then we're going to have to measure up again, same as we do for TPLO. Have you seen a CBLO? Yeah. So, a bit different to a TPLO, um, just kind of like an upside down TPLO effectively. So, I'm going to start my cut here. Take this saw. Just lift that up a bit more, Yui. That's it. So just getting this saw started. I'm just starting the saw on a bit of an angle to get it seated, and then we're going to have to. Straighten up. Does that look good, you? I'm just going to grab that from you. Good there. Yep. So we're going to mark out now our um, rotation that we want to achieve. So similar to what we do with a TPLO. Um, can you check for me, Jess? Um, Twenty six millimeters. Sorry, 26 degrees on a 24 millimeter blade. 8.8. So we got about 9.9. Sorry, 27. Yeah. So about 9.5. So you, we measured 80 degrees as the desired post op angle. So I'm probably going to go a little bit higher. Uh, seen one of these, uh, marks in like with the TPLO. Oh, I rotated the wrong way. Okay. Thank you. Nine. Nine point two two. Let's go nine point five. Thank you. So just putting our second mark on the osteotomy here. Okay. Yep. 
and then we're going to finish our cup. Just a sec. Yeah, hard time getting through this bone. Hold that straight up, right, Ari? Just the tops come off that, so we need to just be a bit cautious. Okay. That's all looking good, just making sure that's nice and mobilised. So, Jess, I'm just going to hand this saw off. The back of that saw just came off and hit Yui, which is why it's unsterile. Okay, so now we've made our cut. It's kind of like an upside down TPLO, I guess. And then we're going to put a, um, we'll actually get a um, 564, sorry, 183. Ain't going to work in that one. So we're just going to switch over and put a pin in a Jacob's truck here. So Jess, what was the question on the chat? Uh, why TPLO versus TPLO in this that's a great question. So the reason we're doing that is because the tibial apophysis is still open um, and it's a bit hard to explain without the benefit of the x-rays, but if we were to do a, a TPLO, then that would actually um, be a risk factor for a tibial crest fracture, I believe, in these guys. And so CBLO is a really nice way to try and get around that problem in these young dogs. And it's probably the only real time I'd do a CBLO over a TPLO um, is in this exact situation. So it's a large breed dog. And um, yeah, we're concerned about concerned about um, the risk of a fracture there. So you're going to get the pin driver next, so you're going to get an 062 pin. And I'm going to need the um, point to points, please. And because it's something I don't do as often as a TPLO, I do find it a little bit awkward, like just getting everything lined up how you want, making sure everything's sitting exactly how you want it. The big speed lock ones, if possible. So the first thing we're going to do here is actually put a um, headless compression screw. Through. Um, the cranial tibial apophysis into the proximal tibia. Do we have the speed lock ones? The speed ones? Yeah, let me just see if this will work first. Just let me see if this works, Jess. Thank you. 
And the extra step in this is putting this um, headless compression screw in place. Can you come over this side, Yui? Stand where I am, just support that foot for me. Let's take that off, we just got a bit of rotation here, we need to correct. Let me see. Let's take that off. Let's relax on that. Let's hold that foot there. I have the speed box, Jess. Just clamp that down here. Just suction and then clamp it. You want? Just suction and clamp. Can you clamp that down here, sorry? Okay. All right. Okay, just hold that uh, hock there right there. Okay, a bit more. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm just making sure we get everything lined up here. I'm just going to get my first 062 pin across here. Before I get too excited. When I get this in, I'll talk to you a bit more about what I'm doing. Okay. So, oh, you can reach. You grab another just relax on that a bit, you, and that should be right. relatively solid. So, I'm just going to make sure the leg's on straight. That's the first thing we want to do here. So, I'm just running the leg through a range of motion and eyeballing it. I think that looks pretty good. Let's hold on to that again, Yui. Okay, guys, so we can see our osteotomy here. I'll just make sure you can actually see that. You can see our osteotomy here. We can see our marks that we've lined up here and here. Um, I've still got um, my rotational um, pin in here, and I've just put a first 062 pin across the proximal fragment into the distal fragment here. That first pin is going to basically be the trajectory for my headless compression screw. And I'm just going to make sure that this is all going to sit in there and work out okay. So I want to make sure that my um, uh, 062 pin is going to go between the screw spacings on the plate. That's the first thing. So that's actually looking pretty good. So this second screw, sorry, second pin is going to go basically parallel to the first. And your second one is really just to kind of be a bit of extra security to hold everything in place while we put our headless compression screw in. Okay. So I think that's looking pretty good. I'll triple check my alignment on that. I'm happy with that. These pins, you need to try and be perfect to it a cut or does it not matter too much? Uh, it's not absolutely critical. So everyone's just asking, with the headless compression screw, we're going to generate some compression. Does the screw need to be perpendicular to the osteotomy? And it's not absolutely critical for this um, 
we, we shouldn't get too much kind of movement because it's going to be pulling on a slightly different angle. Yeah. I'm actually pretty happy with that. It's on a bit of a, an angle like this, but I think as it pulls in and, and compresses, if anything, it's going to pull that caudal aspect of the bone yeah. up and maybe compress it a little bit more. So now that everything's kind of locked in place, I can just talk to you guys a bit more if you have any more questions. The next thing we're going to do is get a um, 3.2 cannulated drill and we're going to run that over the top of the um, first pin that we put in. And you'll notice that is actually going to go through the patella tendon a little bit. And so I'm not really too stressed about that. Um, you would think, you know, you don't want to try and damage that at all. One of the key things when we put in the... Um, we're using these cannulated drill bits is just to run the drill backwards and forwards on the pin and make sure it's sliding really nicely. We don't want to start drilling this on an angle because we'll actually break the pin. The other thing I'll do is I cut as I drill this is actually just drill it in stages. So I'll drill the first bit um, and I'm going to get some saline on there as well, Ari, please. And I'm just actually it's kind of cutting it all pretty well. It's pretty soft bone. But if you're generating heat or if it wasn't cutting well, it's a good idea to... Um, it's a good idea, just so I'm sorry, trying to think about this. Good idea to basically take the drill out and clean it out just to make sure it's um, all the cutting flutes are free of bone and that it's going to actually cut effectively and efficiently. What I'm going to do here is just put this pin back in the hole. I'm going to leave that in there. The next thing we're going to do is then measure how long we want a headless compression screw to be. So I need a drill guide. I mean a depth gauge. So depth gauge if we get one. Do we get a 3.5 kit yet? I uh, don't think we got the 3.5 kit yet. And then, oh, you'll get that one. I'm going to measure the length of this headless compression screw that we're going to use. I'm actually not going to put it down the center of the bone there. I'm just going to kind of put it on the top here and estimate what the length is going to be. So I'm going to go with probably well, I've got a 45 or a 50 screw there, or a 48 even. I'll get a 48, please. Yep. So these headless compression screws, yeah, check the length, though, good idea. These headless compression screws are cannulated, um, and so they've got different thread profiles. So as we put this in, the first thing we're going to do is lock the screw against the um, bone, and then we're going to actually generate our compression, then we're actually going to unscrew the screw from the, um, from the driver. So the screw goes into the driver, like this. We then dri drive it in, it engages, and then we actually, as we're tightening, it'll generate compression between the end of this driver and the screw um, and the bone. And then once we've done that, we actually put another screwdriver, this one, down the center of this one, and we actually drive the screw out of the end into the, into the bone. So I'm gonna check here and make sure that that's gonna work out okay. I think that'll be pretty good. So when we put these in, it's important to make sure we're kind of checking everything and making sure nothing's moving in an untoward fashion as we're driving it. So you can feel it's engaged there. Just keeping on that osteotomy, Yui, I can't see it that well. So it's going across the osteotomy now. Going across the metaphysis. And now it's engaging the transcortex. And what we'll find, as I tighten this up and get this against the bone, this is what's going to actually generate our compression. And what we often find is that you can see that really start to compress up as we tighten it up. OK. 
Okay. So it should be pretty solid. So we take the back off that screwdriver. This uh, screwdriver is again cannulated. So this is now gonna drive the screw out of this kind of holder. So at the moment, everything's solid. We've got the compression against the osteotomy. That screw head is still engaged in this, uh, what we call holder or driver. And then I've got some lines on here, which you may not be able to see, so green, yellow, and red. And what they mean is as I'm tightening this, um, those, as the green line disappears, that screw is backing out. When I get to yellow, that means that um, the screw is um, just proud of the bone. And as it gets to red, it means that the screw is actually embedded right within the bone. So as I do this, I kind of have a hand on the initial compression device and we actually turn it and push that screw out. Again, keep an eye on everything there, Yui, for me. And so now it's released. You can take that off. That screw head is sitting in the bone there. You can feel a bit of the screw sticking out quarterly there, which is what we'd expect. Um, but I think that's all fine. And that should be pretty solid there now. You can check we've got a pretty good rotation there still. Make sure I haven't done anything weird to the leg geometry. So I think that's pretty good. You can take this off here. So that's going you know, to keep everything in place pretty well now. Um, we can actually pull that other pin out there, Yui. So if you guys have any questions on what we're doing, certainly feel free to sing out. Yeah, got it. And I don't know how well you can make this out, but that osteotomy is super compressed really nicely all the way along. Um, so I'm really, really pleased with that. And then the final part of what we're going to do here is actually the kind of relatively boring part. Um, so now we're just going to put a plate on it. Um, and it's going to sit in here like this. So just give me a sec there, you so I need to make sure that everything's going to sit down as we want. It's got a fair bit of buttress on this knee, which I might take off just to get that plate to sit a bit better. So the problem I've got at the moment is that because of this buttress, the plate's sitting off the bone like this a little bit. So in this distal segment of the bone, it's not actually sitting hard up against the bone because there's buttress at the top and it's pushing that plate off a little bit. And that's not ideal because if I put a um, cortical screw in here in a compression hole and I lock this top segment, as I tighten that compression hole up, it's going to want to force that proximal segment um, and try and create some translation and movement, which is not going to be ideal. So to get around that, I'm actually going to remove some of this buttress um, from this patient, from this region just here. Do this yeah, definitely cranial to the collateral. Oops. Okay. More often than not, that's enough to get it sitting down there. You don't know where you can see that, but you, you can probably concur that that's sitting a lot better now. So I'm going to go to 25 to start off, Huey. Uh, you'll get a pin. Thank you. Yeah. Now these pins need to be really tiny. I think they're 06, uh, 035s, if we've got anything smaller. Yeah. It's very quiet on the chat line. <laughs> How many people we got tuned in there? Only nine. Yeah. Who can blame them?
Yep, just give me one sec. Okay. I've got one, Ari. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. So these new plates are really nice where they've got these pinholes in here. So we can put these um, pins in, keep the plate on the bone and just triple check our alignment with everything, make sure it all looks good. Um, and it takes the kind of guesswork out of all surprises when you think, oh, everything's looking good. And then you go to put the last screw in and you realize, yeah, you're not sitting over the bone as well as you'd hoped or something like that. So I think it's a great, um, great developments in the system. Okay, can I get a locking screw, please? Actually, two, five. Yep. So the first screw we're going to put in here is going to be a cortical screw, three, five cortical, so it's a two, five drill. Sorry? Yeah, we need a, just a regular screw key, please, JB. And then I'll get a 20 when you're ready. Jess, are there any questions on there? How deep? Um, good question. <laughs> Down about 25 metres. So, saw a big crane there, probably three to three and a half kilos. Couldn't tempt him out. That's the way it goes sometimes. Thank you. It was a pretty early start. Yeah. Luckily, I did manage to get a nice tray the other day, so we're set for Christmas. It's probably the most important thing. Thank you. So get a 30 locking, please. Thank you, thank you. Ah. Thank you, can you use our power driver? Should just sneak above the headless compression screw. So it's a pretty neat system, um, this headless compression screw system. We use it a bit for this kind of thing. Um, we use it a lot for like sacred relaxations as well. Now, can I get a 28? Oh yeah, more crayfish questions. That's the kind of questions I like. Does crayfish equal lobster? Um, similar. Crayfish uh, is the southern rock, lo southern rock lobster down here in Victoria. Um, so it doesn't have big pincers. It has a pincer of sorts, but it doesn't look like a classic lobster. But I would argue that they're just as tasty. Should do a live stream from the next cook up. <laughs> yeah, the nurses keep harassing me. They keep telling me they're going to bring a crane for champagne breakfast. Yeah, I thought they. Were, I think they're all very hopeful this morning. <laughs> now forty, please. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ari. Thank you. It's coming to my favorite time of year in Victoria. The fishing is good, the diving is good, the weather's getting warm up. All my activities are starting to get doable in the compared to the rest of the year when it's nice and cold. Thank you. I can't even see that one there, you. Good eyes. Okay. Let me clean that bit of bone out of there. So, a couple more screws to go and then we're done. I'm just going to leave it to you and Ari to finish up here. That's fine, body coming down. No. I'm almost out. <clears throat> right. Twenty two uh, just a twenty two, please. So I'm just power driving these at the start and then I finish this off with a um, hand driver. You can get torque limiters, but um, we don't have one and I don't mind actually just tightening them up by hand. Yep. Drill bit is a bit dull. Two again, please. Thank you. Okay, so that's all done. So let's have another look at this leg, make sure it is on straight. Oops. And I'm pretty happy. Okay, guys, so that was it. TPLO, a bit different to a TPLO. Got an extra screw in there. With the headless compression screw. I'm not sure that all looks okay at the back. So, all good. I'm going to leave you with you and then to close up, and we're going to probably finish up the live stream. So, if you guys have any more questions, happy to take those. Otherwise, I think we are going to be all good. So, I'm not sure if we'll have another case for you guys today or not, but. Um, just wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas and I hope you have a safe holiday period and we'll see you soon.